On the 16th of December 1974, hundreds of excited guests gathered at the Glass Tower in San Francisco for the building's dedication ceremony. The Glass Tower was the tallest building in the world at the time, and a hugely anticipated new addition to the skyline of the city. However, very few of the guests in attendance that night were aware that the building had several hidden faults. Faults that would ultimately turn out to be deadly in nature. The glass tower was designed by architect Doug Roberts on behalf of developer James Duncan. Duncan had an extensive portfolio of properties to his name, but the glass tower was to be a particularly special addition. Standing at 515 meters or 1,688 feet tall, it would be the tallest building in the world at the time, and the tallest on the San Francisco skyline by a significant margin. As well as being record-breakingly tall, the glass tower would also be luxurious. It was a mixed-use skyscraper with various businesses occupying premises up to the 80th floor. From the 81st floor to the 120th, there would be hundreds of luxury apartments, each with an incredible view over San Francisco. The topmost 18 floors would be occupied by bars, restaurants, event spaces, and conferencing facilities, as well as the skyscraper's rooftop heliport. As well as internal express elevators that could transport guests to any of the 138 floors in minutes, there was also a scenic glass elevator that ran up the exterior of the building. On the 16th of December 1974, in the tower's 135th floor promenade room, a special dedication ceremony was arranged. Politicians, socialites, and movie stars from all over the country would attend, with celebrity guests including Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, Faye Dunaway, O.J. Simpson, and Fred Astaire. The city mayor would also be present to inaugurate the new tower. Guests would be able to meet architect Doug Roberts, who had designed the glass tower, and infer no rivalry between him and the building's owner, James Duncan, who would be overseeing the night's gala dinner. James Duncan's son-in-law, whose firm had contributed to the building's construction, was also present to enjoy the occasion. No expense was spared in making the dedication ceremony a memorable one. A red carpet reception was laid on at ground level, attended by members of the local and national press. The mayor himself kicked off proceedings by cutting a golden ribbon, although it was noted that this required several attempts, something that was later interpreted as an ill omen for the night ahead. As VIP guests began to arrive and ride up to the 135th floor, Every light in the building was switched on at once, making it stand out like a torch on the skyline of San Francisco. It was shortly after this that security guards monitoring CCTV cameras noticed smoke pouring from underneath a door on the 81st floor. They rushed to attend, anticipating only a small, easily extinguished fire. However, at the very moment they arrived on scene, a fireball blasted open the door, fatally burning one man. This would be the first casualty of the Glass Tower disaster. With a significant fire now burning on the 81st floor, the San Francisco Fire Department was called to the scene. The sheer scale of the skyscraper made the firefighting effort a difficult one. Crews were reliant on the express elevators to rapidly reach the site of the fire, and then had to use the building's standpipe system to attempt to extinguish the flames. Up on the 135th floor, 294 guests were at that very moment sitting down ready to enjoy the first course of a gala dinner. James Duncan, the building's owner, was informed of the fire. He was initially reluctant to disrupt the event, especially as he believed that the tower was essentially fireproof. Even a significant fire on the 81st floor, he was confident, could not travel up to the 135th. It was only after a fire battalion chief spoke with him in person that he agreed to begin an evacuation. At this point, however, the fire was already rapidly worsening. Several guests who tried to evacuate using an express elevator were severely burned when a short circuit caused the elevator 
to stop and open on the 81st floor. Following this incident, it became immediately clear that the express elevators were no longer a viable means of escape. This left only the stairs, which were rapidly filling with smoke, and the scenic elevator on the outside of the building, an extremely slow elevator that could transport only 12 people at a time. With the rate the fire was spreading, it was clear that this one elevator would not be sufficient to evacuate everybody present. Helicopters were called in to airlift guests from the roof of the building. However, the first helicopter to arrive struggled to land due to high winds. This was compounded by two guests approaching the helipad. This appeared to startle the pilot and resulted in the crash of the helicopter into the roof, with the loss of everyone on board. This helicopter crash started a second fire on the roof of the building. The options for evacuation were now incredibly limited, leading some of the guests on the 135th floor to start getting quietly drunk on the abundant alcohol available behind the bar. As a last resort, another helicopter with a less nervous pilot was used to rig a line between the glass tower and the next nearest building, the 102-storey Peerless Building. This line allowed guests to escape one at a time by means of a breeches buoy, a device which is more commonly used to move sailors between ships at sea. Though this line saved several lives, it could only accommodate one person at a time. With the fire spreading rapidly upwards, it seemed certain that hundreds of people would not escape. This time pressure became even more acute when the explosion of a gas line damaged the scenic elevator leaving it hanging from the side of the building. The whole elevator was lifted from the side of the building by a helicopter and carried to ground level, leaving only the breeches buoy as a means of escape. This too, however, was damaged during a panicked scuffle and became non-operational with at least 100 people still trapped on the 135th floor. As a last resort, the fire department lowered a man equipped with explosives to the roof. These explosives were used to destroy the building's massive water tanks. Almost a million gallons of water drained downward through the building, finally extinguishing the fire. The flood drowned and crushed several people, but avoided a complete loss of life among those still remaining inside the glass tower. Several amazing, barely credible stories of survival emerged in the aftermath of the disaster. Particularly notable was the experience of the building's architect, Doug Roberts, who narrowly escaped death when a ruptured gas line exploded and destroyed a stairwell. Despite this, he was able to assist in the rescue of a deaf woman and her children from the 87th floor, before climbing across a ventilation shaft to circumvent a door blocked by debris. His intimate knowledge of the building allowed him to assist firefighters in executing the plan to blow up the water tanks. His presence at the dedication of the building he had designed ultimately saved dozens of lives. An investigation revealed that significant corners had been cut during the building's construction. In order to save around $6 million, developer James Duncan had relied on subcontractors over whom he had little oversight. Some of these had used non-standard materials while others had neglected to complete work to a high standard, resulting in missing fire doors and extremely explosion-prone gas mains throughout the building. It was also observed that the windows in the building were not made from toughened glass, as throughout the disaster they had shattered completely from even relatively slight impacts. It was also found that Duncan had hired his own son-in-law's company to complete some of the electrical systems in the skyscraper. This had been done on a limited budget, using materials that did not comply with standard requirements. This was what had ultimately caused the fire. The substandard wiring had overheated and ignited due to electrical overload when every light in the building was switched on during the opening ceremony. This revelation led to harsh criticism of the building's owner, James Duncan, with some critics remarking that, if the construction budget was stretched, he should have cut floors, not corners. 
In total, around 200 people lost their lives in the disaster, around two-thirds of the guests in attendance at the dedication event. This significant casualty count was nonetheless characterised by one rescuer as lucky, as it could have been much worse. Estimates of the cost of the disaster placed it around $14 million. In the aftermath of the fire, the tower was demolished and has since been replaced by the Transamerica Pyramid, which stands just 48 storeys tall. Several of those involved in the fire went on to dedicate their working lives to designing safer, more fireproof skyscrapers. In this endeavour, they clearly made significant advances, as the towering inferno that engulfed the glass tower currently remains without a sequel. <laughs>